Third take is a charm. Apparently last time I had the camera in the wrong mode. Sorry for the audio quality. I'm in a bit of a rush and things aren't going my way tonight, so I'm using the built-in microphone. I found this interesting uh, jump start pack. It is a Red Fuel Jump Starter model SL161. Uh, it's made by Schmaller, uh, the company that makes the battery chargers for vehicles and whatnot. And it is a uh, lithium ion booster pack. It claims it'll start your car 20 times. Uh, it's got USB charging and all sorts of uh, fun and exciting things. Already uh, got this one part way apart here uh, because earlier the video was not cooperating while I was taking it apart, but I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, the way it comes apart, there are four screws under these little red covery things. Uh, you take out the plugs, you take out the screws, then the top uh, snaps off with a little bit of effort. Uh, there's a little uh, uh, switch cover thing here. This board's held in by two screws, and it carefully lifts out of position here. Uh, this board has the display and some uh, buck regulator stuff, uh, the USB ports, a little LED, and the on-off switch only controls this board. Uh, under here is a EC5, uh, it's a, from what I understand, a fairly common lithium ion, or a lithium battery for RC stuff. Uh, in here are the cells, uh, it's fairly well glued in, but uh, you can see it appears to be a stack of several uh, rectangular batteries. And uh, as best I can tell and a little bit speculate, uh, it is a three cell battery. Uh, it's glued in pretty good, so I'm not willing to pry on it and try to locate uh, markings on the inside. The exterior markings it has on the bottom of the case, uh, supposedly it is 8 amp hours, 8,000 milliamp hours. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that based on the uh, little bit of tests I've been able to do so far. Um, it does also have on the side over here a little, I guess that's the charging control board. Uh, it's got a couple wires that I believe go over to the DC input jack. Uh, it recharges using a little Woolwort adapter that plugs into the uh, connector over here and connects to a uh, 110 plug and it lights up after a moment and says I'm charging and gives you a percentage readout. And there go my screws. One moment. That is awfully unfortunate. I will have to look for the other one. So I will put this a little bit back together. Here is the one screw. As I said, this, this night's been just kind of not the most wonderful everything going the way I hoped. Fortunately, there is enough clutter here that I think it's unlikely the screw got very far. However, it seems to have got far enough to cause me a headache. That is awfully unfortunate. Uh, I will find that in a few minutes, then. Um, so, I've moved these out of the way, and the cover rests on it like so. I'm not going to, well, I can snap it in, it's easy enough to snap off in a bit. Um, that's what it looks like, turn it on, 
when it says 100%. It's got the USB output for a tablet 2 amps or a phone 1 amp. It's got the connector here for the booster pack. Gives you these wonderful booster jump cable things. Um, the way this works, you would clamp it onto your cable, uh, clamp it onto your battery, then plug it in here and push the button. It lights up green saying you're ready to go. It has a few uh, error codes on the back. If it was uh, reverse charge protection is in this box, not in the battery. This is direct into the cells. Uh, under voltage protection. A, a few other things to make it safer. A reverse polarity protection uh, so you can't easily hurt yourself or the battery pack hooking it up to a car. Um, that is about it. Uh, I can't remember if I already mentioned it's got output at 5 volts, 2 amp on one port, 1 amp on the other. It's 3.1 uh, amps total. Uh, cranking current is 400 amps of peak current or 200 amps of uh, continuous cranking. Uh, it's, it's a lithium polymer battery. They say 8 amp hours, uh, 29.6 watt hours. Um, I'm not entirely convinced of that based on some tests I did with uh, hooking it up to a tail light bulb. I, I put some car tail light bulbs on the output and uh, the current it gave me, it, I could pull 10 amps for about 12 minutes, 15 minutes before it ran down. Uh, my best guess is around two and a half amp hours, but I'm going to do another test at lower draw and see if I get a little closer to the claimed eight. I know it's three, got to be three cells. I don't think it's four cells. Um, interestingly enough, if you divide eight by three, that comes up to about 2.6, which is pretty close to what my uh, light bulb estimate said the capacity appears to be. So maybe it's actually a little bit of marketing math. I, I can't prove it. Uh, I'm just, it, it doesn't quite feel like an 8 amp hour battery. Uh, it's a little small anyway for that. Otherwise, it seems like it's fairly well built. It's fairly foolproof. Um, the on-off switch does not control the 12-volt the booster output. Uh, I did learn that. But uh, that's about it for uh, talking about this and pulling it apart. I don't remember on this one if I looked at the branding. Uh, both of these little boards are branded... Bolt power, B O L T P O W E R, and uh, this top LCD board is marked Bolt Power A three V six LCD one M L two one eight five, and uh, then got this little charging guy is a Bolt Power A three B V three M L 2185, and it has a date 2016-05-18. Um, so I don't know uh, what all that means. Uh, it, it does seem to be a fairly uh, well-packaged little unit. So I'll have to see if it's useful to me, or if uh, I want to end up getting something like the... Uh, uh, buddy pole dedicated standalone battery things. Uh, this seems like it's more versatile and the, the EC5 connector, now that I know it's standardized, uh, has some interesting possibilities. Alright, so I thought I'd do a quick addition. I found the missing screws. Uh, they're all accounted for. I got these two put in uh, that hold this board into position. I've got the a uh, little side switch in place and the lens for the LED in place. Uh, this cover has snaps around the outer perimeter. It snaps in 
over top of everything. That looks good. Now turn it over and we put in these screws in the four corners. This has a one on it with a piece of tape because I was planning on uh, having several of them. I've, I've taken to uh, battery powered stuff that I have. I number my batteries uh, in the order that I get them and I also uh, like to add the date on them as well so that uh, number of years down the road those screws are trying to escape again number of years down the road when I'm wondering gee one of these batteries seems to not be good I can figure out which are newer or older and uh, identify a given battery it works well on uh, drills and weed eaters power tools saws whatever uh, when you have multiple batteries that look identical but are different units of them. And these have a little uh, shape to them and a little notch so they fit in here and kind of press into position very carefully. They're supposed to press into position. Maybe I didn't get that screw completely tight. If it's put together correctly it will press into position. There we go. The screw wasn't entirely in. I, I hate to over tighten it. I'd rather tighten it just enough and have to go back. Uh, there we go. Both of those fit in. Ah, I heard it pop back together a little bit more. There we go. And one more of these little covers. And to pop these guys out, uh, there's two things I found useful. One was having a really tiny blade to kind of work up in the, the edge of it to pull it up. And then once it gets out a teeny bit, you, if you have a fingernail, just get behind it and kind of pull it out with a fingernail. Um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's about it. So there is that. I uh, don't remember if I showed you the charger. Plugs in here. Connect it up to the 120 volts. It lights up and tells you it's charging. Life is good. Uh, it's fa fairly idiot proof. So that is uh, this little unit here. Alright, one last little note here. Uh, did a rundown test. 2.4 amp hours, 26.8 watt hours. Uh, it's down to 9.24, 9.26 volts. It's pretty well run down. Uh, in order to accomplish this, I connected up. I've got some meter probes, I'll show you that in a moment, and a wire that goes directly into the uh, power port. My adapter is still uh, on its way from Amazon. I, I wanted to go directly in there to bypass any kind of the uh, smart uh, shut-off mechanism. Uh, the test rig was fairly simple. Have a car tail light bulb, two amps, uh, ran it. Uh, over here I have the readouts and the graph. Uh, as you can see here, it ran a little over an hour. Looks like it really dropped off around 4,000 seconds in. Uh, you can see the, the graph of the runtime there uh, with my multimeter. Um, so that is uh, that is what it will do. It's about two little over. Uh, 2 amp hours, 2.4 2 amp hours. Um, not exactly the 8 amp hours it, it advertises. That seems like it's a bit of a marketing gimmick. Uh, they probably took the 3 cells and uh, multiplied the amp hour capacity and uh, sort of like solar panel companies take the short circuit current and the open circuit voltage to, to 
kind of boost the numbers for marketing terms. I, I think something like that went on here. Um, definitely not a full 8 amp hours at uh, 12 volts. 